So you can see here, I have my file open already. There's a project called Bill, and it only has one composition in it called Car Scene. And this is the scene that we're looking at right here. There's not yet any animation on it, so let's get in here and start to add some keyframes. What I'm going to do is put this character in the car. He's going to kind of jump onto it. So uh, the property that I'm going to need to change is his position. Let me hit the P key. Uh, to expose his position here and to start off with I'm going to pick the moment in time that I want the animation to begin and I'm going to click on this little picture of a stopwatch next to the the property I'm animating. The moment I click that uh, it creates one keyframe on the frame that I'm looking at. Uh, notice the stopwatch is blue now that means that uh, keyframing has been enabled for this layer. Now that means anytime that I change a property from now on a keyframe will be added and the layer will interpolate between those two values. Uh, so I'm going to undo that. I just want this keyframe where he starts and then down a little bit I'm going to put him in the car where he ends up. So let's see how that looks. He just moves in a straight line right now and that's okay. Uh, navigating between these two keyframes is pretty easy. I can use this button over here to go back and forth one. Uh, if I'm scrubbing in the timeline, adding the shift key helps uh, After Effects snap to those keyframes like that. Uh, and if I wanted to jump up in the air in the middle, then one way to do that would be to find the middle point right here and I'll pull them up into the air. Now when I create a keyframe by dragging on the composition panel like this, uh, that sets the the spatial interpolation to Bezier, and that gives me these handles which causes, uh, causes his motion to be on this kind of curved path. I'm gonna manipulate those handles a little bit so that he jumps up and goes sideways in the air and then lands in the car. Let me play that back and see what it looks like. Not bad so far. Um, and now I'm going to have the car drive away. So let me select that layer and I'm going to go through the same process. I want to animate the position in this case. Let me hit the P key. Uh, it's going to start driving away at this moment. So I'll click on the stopwatch there to enable keyframing. And now somewhere down in time a little bit, uh, I'm going to have the car drive off the screen. Now none of the pieces of the car went with it. Not the occupant or the wheels that I've already cut out. So before I do that, I'm going to hit Control Z and I'm going to parent the character to that car layer and also these two tires here. I'm going to use the Shift key to select both of those and I'm going to drag on this little picture of a spiral that's called the Pick Whip. I'm going to drag that to the car layer. Uh, this usually works best when you go to the, the name of the layer right here. So now everything sticks together and I'm ready to drive this car off the screen. Uh, I'll just use the position down here to manipulate it to go straight sideways and I'll drag it all the way out of frame, play that back and see what it looks like. That's not too bad, uh, however I want it to take off a little slower so I'm gonna manipulate this keyframe right here. If I select this, so I'm going to right click on this keyframe uh, I can't see down this menu at the bottom, so let me hit the tilde key while my mouse is hovered over this panel here. Uh, that maximizes the panel and makes it a little easier to see. I'm going to right click on that keyframe, open up the keyframe assistant, and use easy ease out. And now the keyframe has gone from sort of a square diamond shape, now the right side of it is uh, inverted. Uh, and what that means is that uh, it will leave that position slowly. Now it drives away slowly and he leaves the frame. I want him to drive back around on the other side of the frame as well. So how would I do that? I'm going to go down to the point in time where I want the animation to start and I'm going to add a keyframe that has the car's position over here. Now if I play that back, the car is going to drive backwards to get there, uh, and that's not quite the behavior I want. I really want it to look like he drove off this side of the frame, and then he's going to appear over here and drive back. I want to convert this keyframe right here to a hold keyframe, so let me hit the tilde key so I can see this whole panel clearly, and then if I right click on the keyframe, 
I can go back to this menu and toggle hold keyframe is available right there. Let me hit the tilde key again. And what the hold keyframe does is it makes the layer hold at that position until it hits another keyframe. So once I hit that keyframe, the car kind of teleports over here. And now I can uh, go a little bit farther in time, make one more keyframe, drive the car into place, into a stop. Let me check what that looks like. Drives off, drives back in, and he stops very suddenly. I want that same easing thing that I did with this keyframe here. So I'm going to right click on this keyframe, and this time I'll easy ease in. So those two commands kind of work the opposite. Uh, easy ease out means that a property will very gradually leave its initial value, and easy ease in means that a property will slowly come to a stop at whatever value you assigned it. I'll take a look at that now. Uh, that's, he's driving in a little bit fast, so I think maybe I want that action to go slower. Now, in terms of time, slower means that my keyframes are farther apart. If I look at what that does, that's a bit slower. The opposite effect, if I put the keyframes closer together, would be that he drives really fast. <laughs> that's actually kind of funny. Uh, I'm glad I experimented with that because I thought that I wanted slower, but I think the faster is a little bit funnier. And uh, that's looking good so far. My car is missing one thing though. These uh, tires should be rotating. So as the car begins to drive away, I'm gonna go back to that first keyframe and take a look at the front tire. Now, if I hit the R key, I can expose, expose the rotation property for this layer. And I'll enable a keyframe here and wait until the car is off screen. And I will add some rotations to the tire. I can't see them right now, but I know from looking at this number that the tires are rotating. Let me look at what that looks like. Oh, rotating the wrong direction. So I need to go, instead of a positive direction, I need to go into a negative rotation. And I'll go back to check and see what that looks like. That's not too bad. That maybe could use some easy easing out. Let me right click on that keyframe. And down here I have easy ease out. Maybe I want that to start spinning a little bit faster because it almost looks like it slides just a little bit. Actually, maybe a little bit slower. So since I'm looking for slower, I want to space these keyframes out a little bit more. I'll drag that this way. And now that looks a little more. Let me play it back to make sure. Now that's actually too slow. Let me undo what I did. I'm glad that I checked, but that actually looks OK. Uh, and I want the other wheel to do the exact same thing. So I could uh, look at this layer here, bring up the rotation for that layer, and copy these keyframes key like so. Select this layer and hit Control V. Uh, but now if I want to make any changes to the speed of the tire, uh, I'll have to change both of them at the same time, and that could be really annoying. So I'm going to undo a couple of times and instead, I'm going to link the rotation of the rear tire to the rotation of the front tire. Just like we parented a layer, layers together earlier, I'm going to use this pick whip on the rotation property to link it to the rotation property of this other layer. And now when I play it back, they both move simultaneously. And that's the behavior I'm looking for. Let me quickly put some keyframes in on the other side. And since they're linked, I should only have to do this on the front tire. It's going to end in this position, so I'll need to take it and change the value over here. I'm just going to kind of guess that maybe it wants to go this direction, and we'll play it back and see what that looks like. Oh, backwards again. Hard to guess sometimes. So let me make this a positive number, and we'll play that back and see what it looks like. I think they, they're they spinning a little too fast at the end, so once more I'm going to need to easy ease in. Uh, and you can tell that it's an easy ease in keyframe because the left side of it looks like an hourglass like that. Let me play that back. Not too bad. It's a little bit simple of an animation, but I think simple is what I'm going for here. I've got one more thing I want to do to Mr. Bill and his car here. Uh, let me add this layer to the scene. Put that on top of everything, and 
I know it's gonna end in this position right here so since this is the end let me go to the moment where I want the anvil to land on the ground I'm gonna hit the P key to bring up the position for that layer hit the stopwatch to enable position keyframing and then I'll go backwards in time and decide when I want that action to begin this is the Y property here so if I want it to move up I will decrease this number handful of times so now it's off screen all the way uh, let me see what that looks like comes down very slowly so since I want that motion to be faster I'm gonna have to bring those keyframes closer together and I might should look at the animation in context to see if the timing makes sense it took a little too long so I'm gonna move it back and I think it should go even faster I'm gonna put these keyframes really quite close together All right, now I need to make another animation in conjunction with that because I want uh, Mr. Bill and his card to be crushed. So maybe right about here where it kind of looks like the anvil hits his head, I'm going to find the car. I'm going to hit the S key for its scale, and I'm going to enable my first keyframe. If I go to where the moment in time that the anvil has hit the ground, uh, and begin scaling this card down. I've already unlinked the X and Y so that it will scale in one dimension or the other. I'll shrink them down like that and let's go back and play it and see what that looks like. Now it looks like the anvil crushed his car. So if uh, I want to look at my keyframes clearly, sometimes it's a good idea to zoom in on them like this. If I want to see everything that's keyframed on all of my layers, I could select all of the layers like that and hit the U key. Uh, U initially hides all keyframes. If I hit it once more, it will display all keyframes. So now I can see all of my keyframes in context. The car and the tire move together. And then at the end, the anvil and the car are animated together. Sorry, Mr. Bill. Hi, Mr. Bill. And I enable keyframes by clicking on the stopwatch and then interpolating between two values, just like my brand new car. Oh no!